Hello, and welcome back to Reading Rural, y'all. Today, I am excited to talk with you about Jeff Zentner's The Serpent King. Um, I was fortunate enough to get this book in my Allen box a few years ago now. If you are an English teacher, a teacher educator, a librarian, or otherwise YA advocate, you need to know about Allen if you don't. See the link in the description below for more information on that. Um, I'm talking in ARCs, e-galleys, a box so full of books you don't know where to start, all for the price of registration to the conference, which is a steal in and of itself. Plus, you get to hear authors talk about their work, you can rub elbows with them at meet and greets, and you can get their signatures. Uh, so definitely, definitely check that out. I wanted to start this channel with a video about this book for a few different reasons. One, I just love Jeff Zentner. His Instagram is full of pictures and videos of him in rural places, uh, rural towns, on rivers. Not only that, but he is a musician and a poet, which totally speaks to my singer-songwriter heart. And I just love the way he writes, especially the way he crafts his characters. The second reason is he has a new book coming out in August called In the Wild Light, which will definitely make it on here. I was lucky enough, I don't know how, to get an e-galley of it, and I've read it already, and I couldn't put it down. It was amazing, um, so I'll definitely be talking about that book on here. And I wanted to start this channel for the third and final reason because this book is the first book I can remember reading where I felt really seen that the multiple facets of who I am as a rural person with humble beginnings were represented with nuance and humanity. The characters had so much more depth and complexity than you often see in popular culture of rural people. They were more than the Beverly Hillbillies. So here's to a beginning of a channel dedicated to reading and talking about books like this one. Books that rural connected authors who depict the multiplicity of rural identities in ways that present themselves for careful and critical consideration. Now I love first pages. They're always good, even if they're bad, because they bring the promise of diving headlong into a book that'll make you grow as a person and a reader. So I'm gonna read you the first pages of the book. There were things Dillard Wayne early junior dreaded more than the start of school at Forceville High. Not many, but a few. Thinking about the future was one of them. Dill didn't enjoy doing that. He didn't much care for talking about religion with his mother. That never left him feeling happy or saved. He loathed the flash of recognition that usually passed across people's faces when they learned his name. That rarely resulted in a conversation he enjoyed. And he really didn't enjoy visiting his father, Pastor Dillard Early Sr., at Riverbend Prison. His trip to Nashville that day wasn't to visit his father, but he still had a nagging sense of unformed dread, and he didn't know why. It might have been because school was starting the next day, but this felt different somehow than in years past. So that's our first look into the perspective of Dill, one of the main characters of this book. In The Serpent King, Dill, Lydia, and Travis uh, sort of form their own little band of misfits and outcasts who are about to begin their senior year of high school in their small rural town of Forestville, Tennessee. Each is an outcast in their own way, and they navigate school together as best they can and prepare for the possibilities of getting out. Dill is the son of an imprisoned Pentecostal minister and faces bullies and the fallout of his father's very public fall from grace by taking refuge in songwriting. Lydia raises eyebrows with her unique fashion sense and popular fashion blog, and Travis spends most of his time in the fictional world of the popular book series Bloodfall. He even carries a staff. While others see graduation as a beginning, Dill can't see it for anything other than it is an ending. But even before that ending comes, mm -hmm. Dill must mm -hmm. grapple with another one, one that turns his life more upside down than it already is. Now some folks have said... And you could say this probably about any book featuring a small town, that the tropes are cliche. And I think that's, it's hard to do anything other than that because the stereotypes of small town living are so recognizable. But like any stereotype, 
there's a kernel of truth, you know. Growing up in a small town, everybody really did know everybody else's business. That's something that's true. That's not trite or cliche. It's just something that is. Um, but that's not the only thing that defines small town living. And so to reduce it to that is unfair and untrue. So even though there are definitely some tropes here that are recognizable as connected to small town ter- stereotypes, that's not the way that Zentner uses them. And so for me, those criticisms aren't fair or valid. Um, what I love most about this book is the way that Zentner depicts young folks, rural young folks, and rural living as complex and nuanced as it really is. The Serpent King is a book hard to come by with its humanizing depiction of rural characters. I loved the Americana songwriting and music references. At one point, Lydia tells Dill that she's going to build for him a wardrobe that is Towns Van Zant meets Ryan Adams in the Whiskey Town era. And I could totally see that. And so that just really made me feel connected to the people in this book, uh, to the place of this book. Most of my dad's family is from rural Tennessee, and so I really connected with the setting as well. But more than anything else, this book just has a giant heart. And uh, you'll just have to read on to find out how Dill, Lydia, and Travis each work to find their ways in the world. And I hope you do, if you haven't already. Pick it up. It's really good. Uh, That's it for today. I'll see you next time. So y'all come back now, would you?